Hey, what's up guys? I don't really have a cool intro like most YouTubers do, but today I'm gonna to be selling my Audi. And um, honestly, the Audi is an awesome car, but I wanted to make this video showing you the overall cost of owning this car over the eight months that I've had it. Bought it from a dealer, it was a trade-in or a lease or something like that. I love the car, it's freaking awesome. It's like the funnest car in the world. I think zero to 60 is like 4.5 seconds, it's so cool. All the way. And it goes. But I got some big things coming in my life and my business career, so I wanted to get rid of this car to uh, kind of explore some other options. But today's video is gonna be different. It's gonna be me getting the car clean to get it ready to be sold tomorrow because I got a few people stopping by. I'm gonna be going through, I'm gonna show you some things that I really liked about the car, some things that I really hated about the car, and just overall reliability, and we'll go from there. Cool, so I'm not really like a big vlogger, so bear with me guys on this. Bella, you coming to say hi? Bella. All right, Bella, come on. Come on. And there it is. This camera cannot focus to save its life. There we go. Oh, no, it still doesn't want to focus. There we go, Audi S5. Would you look at that? So I'm here in my garage. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go get this car washed. It's really dirty, as you can see. It didn't just flick you off. And I forgot my keys, so I'll meet you guys in the car. Bye, Bella. Say bye. Bye, Bella. All right, we're in the car. Focus, 62,000 miles. Got the radio playing. There's a cop in front of me and we're ready to go. So I'm gonna take this car to the car wash. So the seatbelt tends to yell at you, or the car tends to yell at you, not the seatbelt. This is my first time driving and vlogging. So the Audi S5 is an awesome car. Let me lower the volume over here. This car is rated from Audi to have 333 horsepower, which is probably underrated. I feel like German cars always underrate their uh, horsepower rating. It's got 320 something in torque. I don't remember the exact fact. And overall, the car is freaking awesome. It's got this giant sunroof over here. Uh, the only downside about it is not really a moonroof, so you can't tilt it back. You can only slide it up. And um, the car sounds fantastic. I mean, the car looks fantastic. I do have a few complaints about it though, and it's not to do with the performance, and we'll do a zero to 60 text test in a little bit. So I'm sitting here at this red light, and one thing I wanted to point out to you guys is that the blinker sound on this car is really satisfying. Yep, this is what we do on a Friday afternoon. So I just got the car cleaned. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. And I wanted to give you kind of an overview of what the car looks like, how it sounds. And then we can go from there. So this is the interior over here. It's a coupe. They didn't make any sedans until the next generation. One of the things I love is the steering wheel right there. This is the automatic, so it's in seven speed, dual clutch transmission, which a lot of you guys are gonna hate me out there, but to be honest with you, it's way better than the manual. The gauge cluster is grayed out. It will never focus. There you go. Navigation, everything is kind of angled towards. It's got the seat bolsters. You can adjust the seats pretty much any way that you could possibly think. I love how it says S5 in there. It looks awesome. It's very easy to open it. It's got memory seats. The tint is not too bad, as you can see. But when you do close it, it's very difficult to see inside of it. So to start talking about some stuff that I really like about the car, first off, the looks. I mean, the car itself just looks incredible. I mean, no matter where you go, you can just turn heads really easily. And I live in Loudoun County, which is like basically a higher-end area for Northern Virginia. Everything is bougie. Everyone has Mercedes out there But this this car definitely still turns next or brakes next. I forget what it's called Some other stuff that I liked about it is uh, this car and car enthusiasts are gonna kill me for this But it has electric power steering. So I don't know if you can see this it might be terrible I'm literally taking my pinky right there and I'm turning the steering wheel like nothing 
This car is so easy to turn. And a lot of people hate that because it gets rid of the natural feel, but I tend to like it. Because it makes it a lot easier to drive. And you don't want a car that you gotta pull like two hands with. Been through that already. <laughs> no power steering. The second thing I really like about this car is the speed. This car is extremely quick, and I don't know why, but the 333 horsepower that it's rated at is not true at all. I mean, it has to be more than that. It's such a heavy car. I don't know the stats on it. Probably put it in the screen somewhere here. But this car feels extremely nimble. But there's really easy upgrades to do to this car to get it to push 450 very, very easily. You can change some pulleys out to increase horsepower really fast. You can add an exhaust. You can obviously tune it, do basic stuff like that. It really doesn't cost that much money. I mean, it's a used car. It's 2014, 2015. So there's a lot of accessible tuner parts out for this car as well to make it stupid fast. The third thing I really like about this car is there's so much natural light you can see the sunroof over here there I mean you can keep this open without burning your forehead off and really just have a lot of natural light in this car and it's so comfortable just the other weekend we took this car down to Florida it was so comfortable I mean that was a 16 hour drive to Clearwater Florida and it was it was perfect and you know the craziest part about this is this car is so reliable uh, it didn't really even take that much gas, honestly. I think it's like 28 miles to the gallon, sometimes 30 if you barely touch the gas, but what fun is that? We hit a flat tire and the, the TPMS sensor came on and we drove all the way from Florida, a 16 hour drive to Northern Virginia back on a flat tire because it has run flat tires and didn't even notice or didn't even, you know, stop to think of twice about it. I thought it was just the temperature change and it was just offsetting the sensor or something like that. Turns out I was going to a listening appointment like the next week and the tire exploded on the way there. But anyways, it went over 1500 mile without any issues with a flat tire. I mean, how cool is that? This car will take you to California if you want across country. And then what really made me purchase this car was the sound of it. I mean, it's, it's an amazing sounding car. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to do launch control, <laughs> merging into a highway. Probably not the smartest thing in the world, but uh, you need to keep it in sport mode. Then you need to turn off the traction control right there. And you basically put your foot on the brake, put your gas down all the way, and it goes. I will tell you though, some things I can't stand about this car it's just the whole setup over here. So it looks really cool because you got the start stop button and I do like this electric handbrake button right there. But the whole just interface of it right here, it's the most confusing thing ever. I mean, you got to turn it to the right to go up, to the left to go down, and you don't really have an easy way on the steering wheel to change the radio station. It will show up there, but then you got to scroll through and sometimes it like resets itself and you gotta double click it, and then there's like five versions of the same channel. I mean, when you're clicking on this, you got comfort, dynamic, which apparently is supposed to make it more sporty. Change it to comfort, which I've never felt any difference doing any of this stuff, so I just keep it on dynamic. I mean, this whole setup is, it looks cool, but it's really outdated. I mean, you would think that for a 2014, 2015, we get something a little bit more updated, but another thing that's really annoying is sometimes when you're driving, in order to adjust the speed of the fan, you gotta click on the fan and then adjust it, which is really annoying because, you know, you'll be driving down the road trying to turn it down. You'll be like, what the heck? All right, so, so far this video was kind of just all over the place. I didn't really give you too much information of the cost of ownership, but now I'm gonna take the time to, I have a list of all the receipts, show you what I have spent on this car since the day I purchased it. So working my way backwards, the last repair that I did was that tire that exploded on me. And I bought the tire from Tire Rack, shipped it directly to NTB, which is a local tire shop. Since it's a special, it's a, they, they call it right here, a specialty wheel because it's a 19 inch wheel, it's low profile, so it's like harder to put on or whatever. The tire costed about $230. The actual tire change cost $35. Cha ching uh, I got an oil change in the car uh, about midway through ownership, four months after. I bought it, cost $140, cha-ching, Virginia State Inspection, <laughs> it's only 20 bucks. And one of the biggest repairs that I didn't really have to make, because I didn't know I was selling this car so soon, but the front lower rear control arms bushing was basically just like loose completely. And I, I figured this out because I slammed on the brakes one time, <laughs> just heard this clunk, clunk. Those bushings, especially on German cars, they always go bad all the time. Now, they didn't charge me, I mean, I honestly, I think I get ripped off. I think everything, spending any type of money on a car is a rip off. But the front lower rear control arms, 
Uh, the actual part costs $295, obviously you gotta buy both parts. And the labor on that is $185 per side, so it was a $1,000 repair. And, oh, besides the uh, wheel alignment, you have to get a wheel alignment. And, you know, it's kind of weird, but now that it's, you know, a higher end luxury sports car, you have to get this exotic wheel alignment, which is, for the most part, $300, but I got a little bit cheaper of a rate at $185. So the total to fix that whole bushing issue with the alignment was $1,067.30. Add that up with the other stuff, and um, that is everything that I've spent over the cost of owning this car for eight months, minus financing it. Uh, minus down payment and everything like that. But just to give you kind of an idea of the cost of ownership of what other people have encountered, the car is super reliable, seriously. And if you're buying a car at around 30, 40, 50,000 miles, you're not gonna really run into any issues. If you're planning on keeping it for five years plus, at least budget $5,000 for repairs over the course of that. I would say about a grand a year in repairs would be safe to estimate. Uh, but things that will go wrong, like normal 50,000 mile maintenance, issues is ignition coils those are going to cost around three hundred dollars to get replaced throttle body uh, replacement that's a little bit more intense but that's about a thousand dollars to get it done uh, obviously charging your air conditioning refrigerant that's you know not that much it's like a hundred bucks if that door lock actuator replacements people ran into issues with that it's about four to five hundred dollars uh vibration if you have any wheel alignment issues again we already went through that it's about you know, 180 bucks for a wheel alignment. Uh, tires in this car, when I bought that new tire, again, it was like 220, 30. They're Bridgestone, really good run flat tires. But buying the whole set is gonna cost you around a thousand bucks, depending on if you go super uh, uh, performance tire, like a Michelin Pilot Sport or something like that. Overall, for the cost of ownership for a six year old Audi S5, this car is extremely cheap to maintain. Uh, there's something about the Audi S5 that's just an awesome car to drive, brakes necks all the time, looks beautiful, and it's really easy to maintain. So I would highly recommend you to get this car. Now, kind of the other reason that I made this video is because I'm trying to sell it. So if you or you know anyone that's interested in buying this car, I am asking for 22,000, uh, but I am willing to negotiate. So if you know anyone that wants to buy this car, or get a great deal, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. But anyway, it was awesome making this video. Sorry if it was just long drawn out. This is my first time kind of vlogging, making a uh, video about cars and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. And don't forget to give this idiot a thumbs up. All right, guys, catch you next time.